Greetings. This pen is the Pelican M200, and this is the uh, special edition Smoky Quartz version. So uh, before I actually go into the normal review process for this pen, I want to show you a little footage that I recorded uh, when I first got this pen. Um, I'm going to warn you in advance that there actually is a happy ending here. This pen now writes fantastic. Lee. That was not the case when I got it. So uh, let's just roll this footage that was taken a while ago um, when I first got the pen. This is how the pen wrote straight out of the box. Okay, we're going to check out how this Pelican M200 Special Edition writes straight out of the box as received brand new. This pen costs over $100. So there's a little bit of a hard start there. This is Rhodia paper. So, so far not bad, but see? See all that skipping? I'm gonna pause for a few seconds. Attempt to write again. Hard starts almost every time, just simply by pausing for a few seconds. Again, hard start. I wrote three lines there. I only picked up the, the third one. So there we go. When it writes, it writes nice. It's a nice broad line. It's actually decently wet. I'm getting some nice shading with this um, Pelican Edelstein Smoky Quartz ink. It looks good, but as you see, not writing. So um, I would have to classify this pen four lines, five lines, six lines. So it picked up a little dot for the first five lines and then the sixth line kicked in. So I would almost have to classify this pen as unusable, as received. Look at that. Very bad. Very, very bad. Should not be the case with a $100 plus pen from a major manufacturer but like I said when it writes it's actually very nice but the problem is the reliability you, you can't count on it look at that very bad five or six seems to be the number for writing a line so we'll try one more time one two oh did it on the second one there one two okay so now it's kicking in on the second one kicking in a little earlier but the reliability now it's missing. See, the reliability on this is, is so poor that I would have to classify this as a unusable pen as received from the manufacturer. Thank you. Okay, so as you can see, this pen was really problematic. So this pen is not a cheap pen. You're basically getting a steel nib piston filling pen uh, that's made out of um, plastic for uh, over $100. It is Pelican, which is a premium brand, so you expect a sort of premium level of quality, etc. Um, I took the pen to a Nibmeister at a pen show, and in short order, they made the pen write uh, very well. But frankly, I don't think that's an excuse. For a pen at this price point, um, it should not have written like it did uh, straight out of the box. Uh, you know, absolutely sort of unacceptable level of, uh, of performance from from the pen. Um, that being said, now let's talk about it and we'll talk about the way it is now. So this is a fairly uh, light pen. It weighs 13 grams. Um, not a big pen at all. Here it is compared, as you can see, it's quite a bit shorter than a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. Um, thought it'd be good to compare it with some other Pelican pens. So this is the M200. It is the exact same size as the M400. Um, of course, the M400 is a considerably more expensive pen, uh, clearly uh, a, a fancier material, and most importantly, it has a gold nib. Um, just for reference sake, this is an M600. So as you can see, it's 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 definitely a uh, a notch bigger, a notch smaller than uh, than even the M600. So not a big pen, not a heavy pen. So one thing I'm going to do to, to, so you can really kind of see this nice translucent uh, brown material, we're going to try something here. 
I'm going to uh, shut the lights off and then we're going to shine a light through the pen and we will see how that looks so you could appreciate the brown translucency of the pen so there you go that's the sort of translucent brown color uh, that this entire pen is and you can get another good look at the nice inner cap as well that they provide so this pen typically stays pretty fresh which is which is good as well so that's sort of the translucent brown color that you have on this pen um, the pen has sort of the very classic, as you might expect, pelican, pelican bill shaped clip. At the top of the pen, you have the logo, the pelican logo of the mother pelican feeding a chick. It's a single chick. If you look back at pelican's logo over history, I think it originally started the, pel the mother pelican was feeding a whole nest full of pelicans. The number of baby pelicans have gotten smaller and smaller over the years, and now we're down to, uh, it was two chicks for a while, it was three before that, and now it's down to one. So um, that's, uh, I guess that's just to simplify the, the graphic design. I don't think there's any other message going on there. Um, the top of the cap has, again, the very classic pelican. Uh, shape finial on the top of the clap. I'm not pelican shape, but classic shape for pelican pens on the top of the cap. Around the cap band, it simply says pelican and Germany. And it has a sort of normal piston turning knob. And as I said, this is a piston filled pen. The pen obviously posts and posts very securely and solidly. Um, you probably want to post this pen. It's definitely a little bit on the short side, although usable if you don't post it, but it does post well. The nib is a pretty nice nib. Steel nib simply has the words Pelican, the Pelican logo, and um, a B for broad. Um, I'm going to actually be doing two writing samples with this pen. This is the broad nib that it came with. I also happen to have a double broad nib that fits this pen. So I'm going to do a writing sample with both just to show you the difference. Pelican nibs are notorious for being fairly broad for their size. So you can imagine a broad and even a double broad and pelican is going to be quite a wide uh, line. So we'll see that. And you'll see the typical sort of beefy pelican uh, feed, which is very typical of uh, of pelican pens. The section is a little bit on the short side. The, the threads are not obtrusive at all, um, but this is a short section. It does have a nice bit of flare out at the end uh, to facilitate uh, the grip. So that is that is pretty pretty nice. So um, that is about all we really need to say about the parts of this pen externally. Let's see how it writes. And we're going to see that right now. Okay, this pen right here is the Pelican. M200. And this is in particular the Smoky Quartz uh, uh, version, or the Smoky Quartz color scheme, if you will. Um, this pen uh, writes pretty well right now, but that's not the case. As you saw in the writing uh, sample that I showed you earlier, when I first got it, it really was pretty much an unusable pen, uh, which is really unfortunate because uh, when it's tuned, like it is here, it writes quite well. As you can see, it writes nice and wet. It's a nice broad line, as you might expect. So this is a the broad line. So let's just draw a couple of um, lines here so we can see. And then I'm going to actually switch the nibs right in real time um, because you can do that with pelicans. Uh, and um, uh, we'll uh, see the difference. Uh, so let me just uh, make a little note here. This is the broad version. Um, and then we'll, um, we'll Put the double broad nib in and we'll see how that writes but this writes well nice and wet well performing this is how i would have expected it to write out of the box but unfortunately 
it did not. And like I said, you know, there are a lot of steel nib, piston filled, plastic body pens that you could buy out there. It, to, to charge north of $100 for the pen, you really need to have better quality control than, um, than I saw as evident. Um, so let's switch the nib out. It's actually a fairly simple matter to do. Um, just uh, what I like to do is just take an ordinary sort of washcloth towel, um, grab it by the nib, and just twist it right off the Pelican cart. The Pelican uh, nibs unscrew right out. Um, you could use any old um, washcloth uh, for this purpose. Uh, I'm particularly fond of this Marriott brand uh, washcloth. They do a very, you know, make a very quality product. Um, and then I'm going to just screw in to the empty socket our double broad nib. Um, now, of course, this nib is dry, so we're going to need to probably prime it. And so what I'm going to do to expedite the process a little bit is I'm going to turn the piston filler until some ink comes out. And, um, and that should do the job. Okay, now that we got that going, um, this is the uh, double broad. And as you can see, it's definitely broader than the broad, but not a lot. It's not like it's twice as broad or anything like that, but it is, as you can see, a noticeably broader, broader line. Um, it's a bit smoother as well, which is what you might typically expect. Typically, the broader the nib, the smoother the line. Um, but like I said, this writes very well. This nib wrote flawless. This nib wrote flawlessly right from the get-go. Did not require any tuning or anything like that. Unlike the original nib that came out of the package. Um, we'll talk about this ink in a second. So one of the things that was particularly disappointing about the way this pen came, it comes in a lovely gift set along with this really nice bottle of uh, Pelican Edelstein Smoky Quartz ink that's designed to complement the pen. It would make a great gift, but you can't give it really as a gift to someone, particularly someone who's not a fountain pen enthusiast that doesn't have access to nimmeisters at pen shows and things like that, because they're gonna there's a distinct possibility they're gonna get a pen that doesn't write which doesn't make a very good gift. So um, that's the problem as well. So I think Pelican really needs to up their quality control quite a bit, which, because this was really unfortunate, the, the, way this, uh, the way the original name came. So anyway, now back to talking about the ink. Let's talk about the ink. So this is uh, Pelican Edelstein which I believe, I'm going to look at the bottle, it's both, right? It's E-D-E-L-S-T-E-I-N. -E -E Edelstein means gemstone in German. And it is smoky quartz, just like the pen is called. So this is a really nice shade of brown. This is a brown with a decent amount of shading associated with it. This is a very expensive bottle of ink, though. They get, I think, well over thirty dollars for this um, for this bottle of ink. So that's it's pretty it's pretty pricey. It is a gorgeous bottle, though. I mean, this is this bottle is pretty much a piece of art. So if you want a pretty bottle for your desk, you're not going to get too much nicer than this. This is a great, great bottle. Um, but the uh, question is. Is it worth the money? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's it's if you're just going to looking to buy a nice brown ink that shades, there are a lot of other options. A couple of weeks ago, I reviewed Noodler's Golden Brown, which is a great brown ink that shades. Uh, it's a different type of brown than this, much light, a bit lighter, obviously a bit more in the gold uh, category. But if you want a brown ink that shades, that's a great one um, as well. There are there are other browns that are that are very very good. Um, this is certainly a great ink. It's just a question of, is it really worth the premium price? You're really paying, I think, for this cool bottle, which is, like I said, it's about as nice an ink bottle as you could possibly get. This is just a gorgeous, gorgeous bottle. Um, but this is a nice ink. So if you're not that price sensitive and you really love this ink, it certainly flows well. It writes nice. Um, it's, it's a well-behaved ink. Um, it washes, uh, out of the pens uh, nice and cleanly. So I, I don't have anything against it. 
not the best value in the world, but if, again, if you don't have that much of a price sensitivity to a drink and you really like this brown, it's a nice solid dark brown with sh that shades. And it certainly goes well with this pen. So that's the other thing. So if you want an ink that really complements the pen, this is really the, the choice. As I said, you can get it in a set like I did. Um, um, and that works out well. So I don't have that much more to say about this pen and this ink. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, as always, please subscribe. And I will see you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.